Welcome to Angling Buzz presented by Fleet Farm. I'm Troy Linder. On today's show, we're gonna talk about fish finding logic. Now, the importance of marine electronics cannot be overstated. And in recent years, uh, this section of the industry has made some amazing advancements. Now, the intersection of technology and fishing can be a little bit confusing. On today's show, we're joined by James Linder. He's gonna kind of break down all these different types of sonar for us today when he's out on the water. James. No question about it, modern electronics is absolutely a fabulous tool to really speed the fish finding process. When I initially get out on the water, I use two particular portions of my depth finder. Number one is a map in 2D sonar. And the reason why I use the map in 2D sonar, number one, the map to find fish where they're at seasonally. Um, you know, to find big underwater structures like points, sunken humps, big flats where fish live. Secondly, why I use 2D sonar when I initially start the hunt, and a lot of anglers, good anglers, use a map, and 2D sonar as their default when they're moving is because I can move quickly, and I'll show you what I mean here. I can move at 45, 50 miles an hour, see weeds, boulders, bottom composition, even fish moving really, really quickly. A lot of the other types of sonar readings, like down imaging, side imaging, 360, are really for better, for slow, more refined search processes. Well, that's great to know. Let's say you're out on the water, you mark some bait fish, you mark some game fish. What do you do next? That's a great question. And you know what I normally do is I drive over the structure, I zigzag back and forth over it with my side imagery. And as you see on my side imagery right here, on the tip of this point, we have some great big boulders. And so what I would do is actually drop waypoints or coordinates identifying key spots that fish would likely to be set up on. And this could be anything from a, a hard bottom transition from weed to rocks. In this particular case, I'm fishing for walleyes, there's a lot of big boulder piles on here and that's what I would do is go over, zigzag across this underwater rock or point and make waypoints or coordinates that would identify really key fish holding spots. And this is really important because once I actually start fishing, I'm actually gonna be casting to the high percentage locations that any fish that were living on the structure would hold on. Okay, so you initially found a spot using 2D sonar. Then you go around it using site imaging and then drop some waypoints on key cover and structure points to kind of see how it's laid out. Uh, what's next? Believe it or not, I'm almost ready to put the trolling motor down. The thing is, is a lot of this preliminary work is really efficiency. I mean, these uh, electronics today can really speed the process up, and that's what I'm trying to do. Once I actually put that trolling motor down, I know that there's bait fish here. I know where the absolute best cover is, where the fish are most apt to be holding on. The interesting thing is, this applies to all different fish species, whether I'm fishing for muskies, walleyes, smallmouth bass, largemouth bass, panfish, crappies. The same thing, I use this exact same search process no matter what species of fish I'm fishing for. Okay. And finally, uh, what about 360 imaging? Uh, that's a really interesting technology. It's one of the newer sonar technology, and you can see where I've actually spot locked a boat right here. And when you look at 360, you can see what I did when I had initially had snaked around on the tip of this point and laid down coordinates, what I'm identifying. You can see that that coordinate is directly on a big series of very, very large boulders. And this is what, what it is, is enables me, I'm sitting right here and I know that about 15 to 20 feet directly that way, these large boulders are sitting there. And any fish that are sitting on this underwater structure, could it be walleyes, bass, or muskies, would likely be sitting right there. It's pretty amazing. I mean, that's today's modern electronics. You can really use them to really speed the fish finding process. It's absolutely stunning on how good it is today. Thank you, James, for your time, and thanks for sharing some of that important information on sonar. Well, stay with us after this short commercial break. When we come back, we're gonna be joined by Joe Nelson, who's going hunting for walleye.
can't choose the weather, but you can choose to dress for it. Introducing Blackfish Performance Rain Gear. Utilizing patented event technology, this advanced membrane allows body heat and vapors to escape while offering 100% waterproof protection. With an exceptional combination of waterproof and breathability ratings, Blackfish Rain Gear keeps you dry all day. Whether on the tournament trail or chasing weekend walleyes, choose Blackfish because you can't choose the weather. Northland tackles in the premium hardbait game with the Rumble Crankbait Series. Available in 15 custom artisan colors. All Northland Rumble Series baits are handmade with a unique heat compression molding process that ensures unmatched durability and baits that run true on the troll and cast farther than the competition. You'll discover that walleyes and other species find their unique role in actions simply irresistible. You're going to want to up your game with these new cranks. Fishing is definitely better with balsa. Looking for the perfect fishing vacation? Leech Lake, Minnesota. There's over 112,000 acres of water to explore with fantastic walleye, bass, pike, panfish, and trophy muskies. The fishing opportunities are endless. Leech Lake has it all with over 30 resorts, lodges, campgrounds, and hotels line its pristine shores. Plan your trip. It's Minnesota's original up north vacation destination. Customer first, that's their mission at Don DeLinger Auto. It's not just about the sale, it's about giving you peace of mind for as long as you own that vehicle. Don DeLinger is home to the lifetime powertrain warranty for new and pre-owned vehicles, plus 10 years of roadside assistance. They have an incredible variety of the most popular vehicles and offer pickup and drop off for service. Stop in to experience the Don DeLinger difference today. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. Up next is our Timely Topics feature. We're going to be joined by Joe Nelson, and he's going to go pre-searching for walleye hunting with his electronics. I want to talk a little bit about seasonal movements of fish, and specifically how the mapping factor really figures into your your strategy when you're out there fishing. And you know, this is a critical concept when we talk about seasonal movements of fish as it applies to walleyes. But we're gonna talk about this in a way that's general enough that it applies to all species, especially predator species, because there's definitely a seasonal pattern of movement from the shallows in the early spring portions of the year, maybe some mid-lake offshore type structure in the summertime all the way out to basin relating fish into the dog days of July, August and beyond, as well as a movement back into the shallows again. So when we're talking about mapping and specifically figuring out what areas to fish. So if you're talking early season walleyes, we're thinking shallow. And first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our depth highlight. As you can see right here, everything in green is 12 foot of water shallower. And we're thinking shoreline structure. We're thinking about big main lake points like you see here. And a lot of the associated structure immediately off of it that's also shallow. Again, less than 12 feet really highlights those areas that we want to key in on. And that may be these big main lake points. It may be even some rocks and small rock piles in isolated areas. But it's also going to show those great nursery areas for bait, you know, these big flats that come off of those areas. So spring and early season walleye fishing is all about 12 foot and shallower. And that depth highlight feature really shows it well. But moving on from there, the next move is going to help us figure out where we're going to be catching fish after that period. And when we depth highlight those areas in 20 feet of water, maybe 10 to 20 or 12 foot to 20, that's the next move to offshore. On some lakes that may be as deep as 25 feet of water. So now we're getting out of June and maybe working late June and into July, and those fish are definitely moving offshore. You know, earlier we were focusing on all these shallow water spots, but as summer starts to kick in, you see I've highlighted that 15 to 25 foot range and it really gives your mind's eye so much more to look at because we're starting to talk about these secondary humps, these pieces of offshore structure throughout the lake that these fish are moving and migrating out to en masse. Now you're always going to have some shallow fish, some deep fish, but the idea is, is that when we depth highlight this range during this part of the season, that's where most of the fish of the lake are going to be, and it's where we're going to be able to most effectively target them. Now we start talking about moving into deep summer, well, we've got the offshore stuff that's out in basins. 
Now basins are totally different because again, the substrate is different. We're typically talking deep mud and walleyes are relating to bait fish that are out there suspended over the deep mud. And so many different things are happening now in this basin section of the lake. And if you look right now, I've got my depth highlight in 27 to 37 feet of water. And that's really important because especially when we're talking about basin fish, we're thinking about trolling, right? And so this really helps define a constricted section of the lake where we need to focus all of our efforts. And, and using depth highlight to your advantage for the seasonal movements there is super important. Whether we're, we're talking deep basins, whether we're talking offshore structure, or whether we're talking in the spring and the fall, some of the shallow shoreline portions in 12 feet of water or less. So use that to your advantage. Learn more about the lake and its substrate because of it, and use those shapes that are highlighted to help you catch more fish. Yes, it's important to stay on the fish movement throughout the season. Like walleye, like Joe was going over there, you stay with their movements, you'll catch a lot more fish throughout the season. Well, stay with us after this short commercial break. We have our Buzz Bite reports. In 2020, Minnesota watercraft inspectors found that 97% of boaters were doing their best to prevent the spread of aquatic invasive species. In short, drain plugs were removed, no standing water was inside the boat, and no zebra mussels or plants were found on the boat or trailer. Thanks for following these simple habit-forming rules. Clean aquatic plants and animals from boats, trailers, and equipment. Drain all water from motors and live wells. Remove all boat plugs and dispose of unused bait in the trash. Want to save even more at Fleet Farm? Well, now you can with Fleet Rewards. It's free to sign up and there's no credit card required. Using Fleet Rewards is easy. Earn points every time you shop. Plus, get exclusive member offers, birthday and anniversary perks, free tire rotations, and more. Download the Fleet Farm app or create an account at fleetfarm.com rewards to start earning points today. Fleet Farm, proudly serving the Midwest since 1955. Like many of you, I've had back issues. From the pounding waves of Lake Erie. To over 30 years of competitive angling. And a lifetime on the water, but not anymore. Smooth moves change the game. It's a must have for me and my clients. It's like my boat is floating on air. They're easy to install. Fully adjustable. It makes a day on the water a whole lot more comfortable. Smooth your ride with smooth moves. Tired of doing this? Oh, yeah. Get a can of this and spend more time doing this. That one. Yeah. Whoa. Marine Pro Fuel Treatment helps marine engines start easier, run smoother, and last longer. Seafoam! Marine Pro, new from the makers of Seafoam. Marine Pro is a complete marine fuel system treatment. Just pour it in. Fast starts and smooth running power have never been this easy. Available now at Fleet Farms. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. It's time for this week's Buzz Bite Reports. To kick it off, we're going to join Doug Wagner in Green Bay. Today we're in the Southern Bay. We're fishing for eaters. I got my customers behind the camera. We just caught a nice three-man with the walleyes. This is probably one of the bigger ones. We actually kept 20, 21 incher, but we're trying to let any of the bigger ones go. But anything trolling crankbaits, I would say between 1.8 and 2 miles an hour. Smaller stuff, purple's always a super good color here. Our water temps are in the mid-60s. But uh, yeah, the lower bay bite is absolutely on fire. There's been a bunch of fish being caught. And if you guys are looking to come catch a bunch of eaters, it's a great time to do it. Those are some great walleyes, Doug. It's always nice when you can come home with the limit. Now let's head to Hayward, Wisconsin with Jeff Evans. We finally got some much needed rain, but our water temperatures have really warmed up over the last week and our fishing's gotten a lot more consistent. On the inland lakes around Hayward, I'm seeing anywhere from the high 50s to low 60s for water temperatures. Smallmouth bass are moving into spawn, but you can still get quite a few pre-spawn fish. Hair jigs have been really productive for us over the past week. There's been a lot of bug hatches, and so whenever I see bug hatches, the hair jig seems to be a go-to presentation. 
Uh, crappie fishing has been excellent uh, in the back of shallow bays and anywhere from three to five feet of water. Walleye fishing has also been very good. The key to the walleyes has been spending time looking for those new thick patches of weeds that are growing up. Once you find those good patches of weeds, work them over with a jig and a minnow or a slip bobber and a minnow, and we've been catching quite a few fish. On Chihuahuan Bay, water temperatures are in the low to mid 60s, and there's a ton of smallmouth bass in anywhere from three to six feet of water. Slow sinking plastics have been our best presentation, and we've been having a bunch of really big numbers days. The fishing's been really good. Thanks, Jeff. Now let's jump on over to Lake Vermilion with Billy Rosner. Musky season is fast approaching this next coming weekend. The water temperatures have warmed up. It's pretty much most of our water is 60 degrees, give or take a few degrees. Muskies are done with their spawn. They're back in your shallow bays, anywhere from that three to six foot range. You're gonna start moving out of those areas to shorelines and progressively migrate out into the main lake areas and reefs. But right now they're really shallow. This time of year, I like to go light. This is a seven foot three St. Croix downsizer. I got 65 braid on there. I like throwing the number 18 Rapala, I like the bigger shad wraps, I like the flat storm flat sticks, I like the blue fox sprinter baits, the blue fox inlines, and the booker tail inlines also. So this thing's small, you don't need super baits this time of year. And uh, some of those areas too, you get near in the afternoons when that water temperature climbs up two, three, four degrees, that can make all the difference and gets those big fish going. Some of the same areas are gonna get into some nice northern pike also. Thanks, Billy. Now let's head south to Leech Lake with the Leisure Outdoor Boys. I just came back from Leech Lake for the weekend and uh, the fishing was fantastic. You know, it's kind of a transition already. We had water temps in the mid 60s in certain places. Um, still pretty cold in other areas too, the deeper waters like Walker Bay. But there were fish scattered. There were fish all over the place and maybe transitioning, not just locations, but uh, what, they were, what they were eating on as well. You know, we caught fish lindy rigging, long line lindy rigs. Yeah, with night crawlers and both leeches. Uh, 12 to 14 feet of water off some of the main points like um, Otter Tail Point and Stony Point, as well as up by the hardwood points. Uh, Jig and Shiner still work in, uh, in Walker Bay, Agency Bay, Agency Narrows, some of those colder water places, and any place where there's weeds. And where you find the weeds, not only do you find, find the hungry walleyes, but jumbo perch. Crappies are up on their beds, so a selective harvest as always. It's fantastic fishing up on Leech Lake. That's great. Now let's head west to Devil's Lake with Jason Mitchell. You know, the water temperatures just keep creeping up each day. We've had some nice weather now. Grass starting to green up. It is definitely what you call that late spring, early summer period of time. And the program hasn't changed. I just think the fish are just easier to find and catch right now. So still using a slip bobber. Now I'll show you a couple things here on Devil's Lake. There's a lot of trees, there's a lot of pikes. A lot of times I'm using a heavier braided line for my main line for slip bobber fishing, which some anglers might think is kind of unusual but what I do is do two bobber stops on that 14 pound power pro that way it grips and sticks to the that super line a lot better just a just a cork bullet weight swivel then I'm using a 12 to 14 pound fluorocarbon leader just to make it more pike proof I've still been having the best slug with just a single hook besides slip bobbering the other thing we've been doing a lot of is casting soft plastics and again most of these fish have been shallow, you know, anywhere from say three to maybe eight feet of water. And so a lot of times I'm going through, I'm just throwing paddle tails or boot tails like these right here. These have been good, but any type of a three to four inch paddle tail, but just a quarter ounce jig head, that's been working good, especially for fighting fish. Because we're also starting to throw crank baits, you know, just shad imitating baits, uh, number five shad wraps, uh, salmo stings, uh, countdowns, you know, just something that's, you know, that'll run at three to seven feet of water. Devil's Lake is heating up. It's definitely a time and place right now to be out fishing. Lake Vermilion. Explore. Relax. Reconnect. Minnesota's most beautiful lake. Oh. Get hooked on our trophy wallet. That's a beauty. Bass. This is my favorite fish. Musky fish. That's a beauty there. Things to do, you'll never get bored. Rooms with a view, we got them. Lake Vermilion, four seasons of fun. 
simple, fast, and easy. This automatic launching and loading system on BoatToTrailer.com makes unloading and loading your boat a breeze on both roller or bunk trailer configurations. This system is a simple one bolt install. No more hanging over the boat, no more cranking in the boat, and no more wet feet. Speed your boat ramp time by visiting BoatToTrailer.com. You don't know their names yet, but you will. And now it's time for our cool products brought to you by Fleet Farm. We're going to start off with Bubble Blade. This is their lithium ion electric knife. This has a non-slip grip. You have a backup lithium battery. These are long lasting batteries. You can fillet a lot of fish with it. You can see four different blades, two stiff and then two E-Flex blades. If you need a little bit of a flex in the blade, you can clean a lot of crappie, you can clean a lot of walleye, and a lot of northern pike with this just fantastic quality from Bubba Blade. Up next from Seafoam, Seafoam High Mileage, and this is uh, formulated for vehicles over 75,000 miles. This cleans your whole fuel system, reduces gum and varnish inside your fuel system. Just pour in a can of this every tank, every other tank. Uh, my truck has nearly 150,000 miles and I always use this. You know, I want to maximize the life of my vehicle. This cleans and lubricates the entire engine system. Seafoam, high mileage. And up next from Suffolk, Suffolk Promix. And this is the Promix monofilament. This is great for jigging, uh, using jigging wraps or uh, swim baits, you're jigging shallow for walleye. You need that little bit of extra stretch. This is fantastic. A couple different colors I actually have here. This is clear. We also have a, a low vis green. You can also use this as leaders on, if you braid for mainline and you want to use a leader, you know, Promix monofilament is excellent, both as mainline and a leader. And talking about jigging, well, here we are. Rapala Jig and Wrap, one of my favorite walleye jigs, uh, both fishing shallow and deep. This is size nine. If you really want, you know, fish in the shallow, this will really pop down in the bottom and create a loud commotion. This thing falls very quickly. A size seven and size nine is absolutely perfect. I mean, this thing works in the middle of the summer, flat, calm, sunny days. You'd be amazed fishing on sand flats, gravel flats, throwing something even this size, a size seven or size nine to trigger big walleye to bite. Also from Rap with the Shad Dancer series, this is a, a, a really great series for both casting and trolling when you want a compact design and a lot of wobble. So what you can see, it has a really big lip, again, a smaller body design, but it has a wide wobble action, great for trolling, great for casting, salmon, trout, walleye, bass, just a, a really fantastic series. These are uh, floating. And if you troll these, you know, a lot of walleye anglers troll these long lining and, le and lead core as well because they get down deep and you get a nice, uh, again, great action in a small compact design. And up next from Northland Tackle, the Northland Fireball Stand Up Jig. You can see for a big piece of live bait, this is perfect in the stand up design because it stands up when you jig it across the bottom. You have a live bait. Uh, stinger attachment on the bottom of this wide gap hook, long shank hook, again, for fishing a big chunk of live bait when you're going after big walleye. This is a great option. You're fishing shallow around weeds, around brush or timber. The Fireball stand-up jig is a great choice. And another jig from Northland Tackle, the Critter Craw. Well, crayfish are a big uh, food source for a lot of different fish in the upper Midwest, especially largemouth bass, smallmouth bass. They have the critter craw here. The soft plastic is integrated with the head design. This is also a stand-up uh, design on this as well. And the pinchers actually float, so we're dragging along. The arms are up in the air, and then when you pop it, they actually go outward. The arms won't, won't go inward, so you don't have to worry about it snagging up on the hook. You got a little brush guard on there. It's just a great all-around a uh, jig for fishing for bass and rocks and brush, uh, a really great uh, craw bait, the Critter Craw from Northland Tackle. And it can get warm in the upper Midwest and being protected from the sun is important. Blackfish has you covered. 
This is their Sun Gator. This has a four-way stretch, UPF of 30. This will keep you cool and protected out there on the water, even when it's hot and humid outside. And next, we're gonna talk about electronics from Humminbird, the Humminbird Helix series, a very, very popular series. This is the Generation 4. The imaging is absolutely incredible. The down imaging and sonar on here, you can really see the separation of the bait fish from the game fish fishing around the cover. It is just an amazing, amazing unit. And you can see from some of these screenshots here just how much clearer you can see down in the water and just see where the fish are, what the cover looks like. Just incredible. The Helix 9 Chirp Mega Down Imaging from Hummingbird. And lastly, from Balls Out Mounts, over my shoulder here, we have one on set. These are aircraft grade aluminum made in the USA, a limited lifetime warranty. You put a lot of money invested in your electronics, your marine electronics, and you wanna make sure they're protected. Balls Out has you covered there, a lot of different sizes, different mounting systems that can basically fit on any type of boat. Well, be sure to stop by your local Fleet Farm store. You can also shop online at fleetfarm.com. And right now it's time for our technique of the week. One of the things that I have to work on every year is making sure that I don't spend too long on any one spot for no good apparent reason. And it's really common, happens all the time, even to me. Uh, so. I think the, the biggest key to that entire thing is to look at your graph and make sure that you have evidence for being where you're at and why. And usually that's in the form of fish that you see on the graph. Now, then the question arises, well, you know, maybe you catch one. How long do you stay at the spot then? Well, I, I try and use a rule of every you know, 20 minutes or so, uh, if I'm not seeing good evidence of fish on the graph or I'm not catching fish, I'm trying to move. Sometimes those are small moves, especially if I've seen fish on the graph in the area. I don't make great big moves. I think it's really hard for a lot of people, and myself included, to not fish memories. You know where you had caught them. Or maybe it was just last week that you caught them. Yeah. Nice, buddy. <laughs> Always use the day and your observations to trump all other advice. So if I catch one or two fish in a spot, but I'm not seeing very many on the graph, Maybe it's time to move fish. It's the hardest thing to do in the world to leave fish to find fish. But again, uh, I try to use my electronics to help me figure out how much time I should be spending on a spot. And definitely at that half hour mark, if nothing's going either from a catching perspective or a looking perspective, I'm gone. So try to use those tips the next time you're out on the water. Don't spend too long on any one spot, especially if you're not seeing those fish on the graph. I know many times I've left a spot and the other boat there said, why'd you leave? They just started biting. It's, it's difficult to know when to stay on an area and when to leave. And if you go to anglingbuzz.com, you can see more articles, videos from Joel and other great anglers. On next week's show, we're gonna be talking about crankbait logic. And as always, we wanna help remind you to stop the spread of aquatic invasive species. Anytime you're leaving any body of water, remember, clean, drain, dry. Well, thank you for joining us this week. I'm Troy Linder, and we'll see you next time.